And I was putting input on locally or globally on this population of on cells and looking at feedback and oscillations and all that. That's half the story. The real story has a whole other population that do exactly the opposite. Okay? They, when the input goes, let's say the electric input goes up, these guys go up and these guys go down. Yet, they all participate in the same feedback loop with the same delay. So, it was a bit of a puzzle. We tried not to think about it at the time when we were publishing these papers. We were saying, what about the off cells? Okay. Off cells and on cells are part of the organization of the electric sense, of your visual sense, of somatosensory, of pain receptors. They're all over the place. Most sensory systems are organized with on and off. And these on and off participate in feedback loops. Not at the retina, but higher up, the LGN, the, the thal to, to cortex, they participate in feedback loops there. Uh, let me, so you can write down equations for this. This is a neural field model. Um, let me just show you what can happen. You can have a situation where all the cells are, are quiescent, and then at some point you turn a bump on. You stimulate locally in space. And what happens? You start getting an, oscill an oscillation in the activity. Okay? So the activity in the network is going to fix, and then you turn that bump on, and it starts oscillating. So you're getting this hop bifurcation. The off cells are doing the opposite. They start oscillating at a lower level. So you can play around with this. You can do this with integrated fire cells. David? So uh, simply, um, you have uh, a time operator here, uh, and they, this is the feedback. And one gets the input directly, and the other one gets the input with an inversion. Okay, simply put. So you can verify this with integrating fire cells. You see the same thing as the neural field. You can have a situation where it's oscillating and you turn the stimulus on and it stops oscillating. You get weird situations where you turn a local stimulus on right here at this time. All these guys go up, but the neighborhood guys who don't receive the input directly, they also go up. That makes a bit of sense. But now if you increase even more the input, and you go to this situation, now the guys next door go down. Why is that? That's because everyone's participating in the feedback. And it's, but there's on and off cells. So you have to write down the equations to kind of sort all this out. This is what's really happening. Here's an even weirder effect. I can stimulate something in the middle here with a, with a frequency. So imagine I'm looking at a spot of light. I'm staring at the wall here. And I have a, a light that's modulated you know, in intensity. The contrast is going up and down, sinusoidally. So my cells looking at that directly are firing at that period. They're seeing the modulation, as you'd expect. What do the neighborhoods see? They're not stimulated directly. They're stimulated only by the feedback. Well, they're seeing twice the frequency. So all kinds of weird effects that start showing up. And this has to do with the feedback and rectification, and I won't go into the details of that. Okay, so on and off is the next venture for us to try and understand all this. And, and does it make a difference? Well, if you have just on, it's very easy to get oscillations. If you have on and off, it's not so easy to get oscillations. Yet, we see oscillations in the experiment. So it's a bit of a conundrum right now. Let me end with a, an example on posture control. So posture is uh, we're looking at the dynamics of uh, center of pressure. Okay, so you're sitting, sorry, not sitting, you're standing on a force plate, okay? And the force plate calculates your vector of all your points pushing down on the plate. And it calculates the center of that force, okay? So people do this for a living. I don't do this, but some my, my, my colleagues in Ottawa and, and in Amsterdam do this. They, they record this. And, uh, and if you think about this process of standing up, there's at least two delays. One delay is the time it takes for the reaction from my ankles back to my brain and back to my ankles, right? 
to control my posture. Another delay has to do with my vision. If I have a visual cue, <coughs> if, if I have vision, it takes me a bit of time to get the feedback from the vision. And we know vision helps you stabilize. You should just try it if you close your eyes and you open your eyes. You're better with your eyes open, generally. Okay? So here's an experiment that we did. This is your center of pressure as a function of time. This is with no feedback, so your eyes are shut. And now, this is with feedback, with your eyes open. And this is the task, okay? I'm gonna put something on the wall here. I look at a computer screen and I look at a target. Or I should illustrate it like this. I, I look at a, there's a dot on the wall, or this target here. This is my target where I should, where I should point. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the signal from the center of pressure calculator and I'm projecting it on the screen. So I'm here looking at the target and this red dot is my center of pressure moving around. Okay? And I try to keep my center of pressure as close as possible to the target. You understand the task? I try to stay as close as possible. However, I play a trick on the subject. I don't represent their position right now but I present the position from 250 milliseconds ago up to a second ago. You expect at some point that either the person is going to throw up or is going to walk out on you or, or get injured or something. Older people have longer delays. And this is part of the story. We're trying to figure out what's happening to the balance control. It's, it's, as you know, it's very costly, uh, personally, um, the default when, you, when you're old. When you're young, it's not so bad. Okay, so as you increase the delay, these are the time series you get. And what we're interested in is, well, what's going on? There's two delays, and one of them is manipulated. We can't manipulate the other one too easily. It's, it's built in, right? Your, your posture sensor. And we're interested in the variance of this thing. So the variance, we can plot it. If the variance starts going very large, that means you're swinging all over the place, right? So what do you think is happening to the variance? Is it increasing as you increase the delay? It looks like it. But if actually you average over a lot of trials, the delay doesn't really matter. Your variance is high when your eyes are shut. But when your eyes are open, it doesn't really matter what delay you put in there.